Now that's the why the decarbonisation target is we're so important. We're Roger ignoring Helmer. the elephant in the room. Uh, Matt Hancock said that emissions are down. Emissions within our geographical boundaries are down. If you include the emissions on the products which we have imported, because as I said earlier, we have displaced major energy intensive industries out of Britain, out of Europe. If you add in those emissions, emissions are going up. No, not true. Actually, well, actually, 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 hold on. Hold on. Year, hold on. We got, we got, got, hold on. Cancock, you know, we got some of the steel works going again, like at Redcar. But there's a question from something that Caroline's just said and was announced today by the Labour Party, which was that we should entirely decarbonise our electricity sector by 2030. And the Committee on Climate Change Research shows that that would cost £96 on every bill. Okay, so who's going to pay Thank for you. it? Caroline. Well, thank you for letting me answer. That's just not true. We've always been very clear when we argued it for it, when there was an energy legislation going through Parliament, which the government, Liberals and Tories didn't support, we've always said it should be in line with the Committee on Climate Change, which is to get to a place where we can be between 50 and 100 grams per kilowatt hour. We're, today it's around 450 grams. So are you Andrew, in favour of so this decarbonisation target or not? Uh, because we, the decarbonisation target did you costs not hear what I said? I'm sorry, did you? Well, on let, me, every let, me, let me answer that as well to you, because mm. again, Lord Devon, who is the former a Tory MP John Gummer has said very clearly two things. We said that the decarbonisation target should be in line with the Committee on Climate Change. That is about carbon intensity. But they've also said you've got to look at the costs of not decarbonising carbonizing our electricity sector. And they have shown when Tory Central Office sent something out saying exactly what Matt Hancock is saying today is actually it will cost us more in the long run if we don't can move I get to a, this. Can, can saying, I just take a hold on? Hold on. Can I just want to use a matter I of fact here? I haven't said there isn't a cost, but ah, there's a bigger cost. The cost? There's Lynch. a bigger cost no. if you. Hold on, where Caroline, we are at I want moment, to establish something in your manifesto. Is it not true that your manifesto sets out a legal target to remove carbon from the UK's electricity supply by 2030? It is about removing carbon, but we've said all the time, Andrew, well, have you set out a legal target, or haven't you? We've said in line with the Committee on Climate Change... Well, uh, is it legal or not? No, but we want to have a legal target because okay. that's why we will do it. We had the chance, Andrew, in Parliament. Unfortunately, the Tories and the Liberal Democrats did not support Labour's policy to have this on the statute book, and therefore they've delayed it till 2016. So a Labour government will act on this. It's but on page it 20 mean, of the manifesto, and the key question mean. is, will Sorry, it cost £96? Pounds? No, you don't. Andrew, you do I, not support it. Yes, Roger. Roger. Some Roger. On this? Okay. I've just spoken to Caroline about this because I wanted to ask her about this. Labour's manifesto looks like it's going to take 100% of the carbon out of electricity by 2030, which most experts I've spoken to say, you know say is completely unachievable. You've clarified that actually it's not quite 100%. No. You want something less than 100%, but the manifesto doesn't look like that. And if okay. I can just put in a clarification, hang on a sec, <laughs> just put a clarification on the renewables as well. We are moving fast now on renewable electricity from an extremely low base, but overall we are still lagging way behind on the overall renewable energy target. Um, so to get is Ed, Ed is being a bit misleading. He, he keeps no, putting actually, onto electricity. I said it's general very energy clearly, we need to as, be uh, as the record will show, that we're behind on transport and uh, heat. But, that's but, but we, have been, we have been accelerating that because we had very little done by the last Labour government. One of the issues on this debate, though, is about international work because we are, the UK is only responsible for 1.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So you have to work internationally with other countries. I'm very proud of what we delivered at the EU, the most ambitious greenhouse yeah. gas target for the whole but of the Germany world. Is and, 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 and the problem... The problem, is the, problem, the problem for UKIP and, and the Conservative Party, their position on Europe would undermine the international efforts on climate change. All right. and, well, that's, and we'd that, be very that's, happy to and, do and that. And that's why, well, that All right. speaks okay. volumes. I you don't believe climate change is happening. Do I do believe climate change is happening. Are we going to hit our 15% overall energy renewable target? There's, there's no way the, cur the current rate of growth that we're actually going to achieve. Well, thank target. heavens for that. No. And, and so, I mean, I think the important thing here is to actually sort of look at Europe and look what's been going on. Uh, because the UK played a disgraceful role, really, along with Poland, in uh, in, in 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 actually You're seen as the, the as the champions. Yeah, that, in actually, in, in actually, sort of getting rid of an energy efficiency and renewables target, working with Poland. Most of the countries want an energy efficiency target. Most of the com com okay. co countries the want a renewables target, and so those are the sort of things which are actually holding back All industry right, want, in this okay, country. And yes, I want to come back. back. To Caroline Flint, because Roger had an interesting, interesting point. If we are going to largely decarbonise our electricity generation by 2030, whether it's legal or not, that means that we will by then overwhelmingly be dependent on nuclear power and on renewables. They are both between two and three times as expensive 
as current fossil fuel generation, our bills have to go up, don't they? They're bound to go up with that target. Well, there's also carbon capture and storage as well, which, which is we don't yet we... have the technology. Well, hang on a second. Well, hang on a second. There are eight. The there are eight operational plants around the world that are doing carbon capture and storage at the moment. In America, in Canada, there's one in Algeria as well as one off the coast Not of Norway. Not on a massive so scale. But they are producing something like I think 23 million tons of CO2. They're capturing and pushing in up prices. So from what pushing I'm told, on, from to what you. I'm told, Andrew, is the technology's there. Well, what we need to do, and unfortunately there have been delays under this government, is power forward in terms of what we can do in this area. But the truth is this, there are costs to this, but let's remember on our bills, the green levies only amount to £60 of an average bill of £1,300, and we've had our bills go up £300 in the last few years. But it's about recognising what are the costs if we don't move to cleaner energy, and that's important too. Right. And to, and, uh, to um, the point made about heat as well, look, green gas, National Grid have said, could form 40% of our domestic supply. That's another option that we should be looking at in the future. And the truth is for transport, one of the reasons why decarbonising our power sector is so important it can create the energy yeah, for the electric right. cars but you have to do that to be able to marshal the amount of outputs exactly. in transport okay let me necessary. come to Roger Helmer so uh, goes hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Goes Roger so Helmer I have Caroline, a question Caroline. for you no hold on you don't think climate change is man-made but you admit that that's just in your own words speculation is that how you make UKIP policy uh, no, it's how Caroline is making uh, Labour policy because she wants to respond to this speculative man-made climate change so theory with it, enormous costs. I believe Caroline in do climate believe change... In, do you believe I, in man-made climate change? I do not believe that the changes in climate are substantially caused by human activity, well, no. Well, then you are and in a very if small let, party of people well, well, no, who I'm believe a, that, and you're putting a no, lot of things... You have to let how, how many people on the doorstep have raised the issue of climate change? I've been knocking on a lot of doors, I haven't come but across that, it yet. That doesn't mean but it's not true, though. It doesn't mean it's not true, no, but it means it is a speculative proposition, a forecast based on computer models which have been or time and again evidence. proved Simply wrong. The there, has right. been, there has been no further global warming for 18 years. Well, I think, the um, total global the warming seas. in the last 100 years is less than one degree. That is exactly what we well, saw a 1,000 years okay. ago in the medieval it, warm period, 2,000 right. years not ago only, in the Roman Optimum, 3,000 years ago in the Minoan Optimum. Let me come to Ed Davey, because global temperatures haven't risen. Surface temperatures haven't risen now for more than 18 years. We're in the 19th year. How long does this pause have to go on before you reconsider spending tens of billions of pounds on climate change? Well, not only uh, do the, the models uh, predict this type of pause, but they also, oh, uh, they also okay. track the global uh, warming and greenhouse gases and climate change in other ways. The heat in the oceans, the acidity in the oceans, whether the polar caps are and the glaciers are melting, mm. the rise in the sea levels, all these other indicators of climate change are happening. You picked on just one, Andrew. That's a big mistake. Could you tell me if you look model, at all the, if you you talk to the scientists, which models predicted the pause? Several of the major international, if you look at the, the IPCC didn't mention them. No, no if, you, if, if you look at some of the people who work for the IPCC, they predict oh, this. Oh, they didn't put it into the their report, which was but, based on but, the climate they model. They predicted no, but, it after but, the event. But, but if, you, if you look at the report, the report the they'd say exactly what I just said, that but, there are many yeah. indicators Roger. of climate yeah. change. OK, two things. Firstly, the pause was not well expected by climate scientists. They've been scratching mm. their heads about what's causing it. Mm. They're still very confident that global temperatures mm. will continue to rise, yeah. as indeed are a lot of of climate contrarians in this country now too but I'd, I'd like to ask a question to to Roger Helmer uh, if I may what you you say it's all speculative and based on computer models yes uh, there's one thing that's not based on computer models and that is our predictions about ocean acidification mm. the co2 being soaked up by the oceans turning the oceans more acidic that is mm. a scientific fact I'm presuming that you agree with that and can I ask a supplementary as well is why is it that almost all climate skeptics, not all, almost all of them, are from parties on the right. Why do you think okay. that would be? Roger Helmer? Uh, well, I, I think that there is a left-wing tendency to jump on new ideas that seem appealing and do things with them. Uh, but on ocean acidity, uh, if you look back, as I'm sure you know, Roger, over the history of the Earth and the climate in the long term, the CO2 levels we have at the moment, as low as 0.04%, is, in geo-historical terms, very low indeed. This is, 
Now, there has been uh, life in the oceans, uh, including life with uh, shells, which are supposed to dissolve with ocean acidification, for at least 600 million years. Uh, the fact that they have survived through much higher CO2 levels gives me confidence that they okay. will continue to do so. Uh, Matt Hancock, do you think that um, last year's floods were caused by climate change? Well, I think that there has been an increase in erratic behaviour of the environment, yes. And, I and think, is that caused by climate change? Well, I think mm. there's no doubt that there are changes in the climate, I think mm. highly likely to be man-made. And frankly, from my point of view, all of this uh, debate demonstrates very clearly that there are very significant risks from climate change that we need to mitigate. But we because need to do it in a balanced way most, to try to Most conservative the voters don't think the flooding was caused by climate change in a recent YouGov Sunday Times poll. Well, be that as it may, you asked me here to set, yeah. set out what my opinion is. No, I just want to just point my, out But we've got to do this very carefully. On we've this. got to do this carefully and cautiously, and we've just heard from Caroline Flint that to go further would increase costs, and a cost no, of I £96 said costs pounds of not to extra. Changes as well, but, and, far but, bigger. but, the, but I mean, you know, there goes Labour's so called the, price the freeze. The She's is, just okay, announced well, they're going to put prices up. Okay, Caroline Flint, let's come on to that. Let's come on to that. Sorry to shout a little bit at you there, but you actually <laughs> keyed me up perfectly for what we're moving on to as we move on to energy now. Now, Caroline, for energy prices are now falling, so it's just as well that you weren't in power when you came up with the idea of freezing our energy bills, isn't it? Well, actually, if uh, uh, bills had been frozen at the time of Ed Miliband's speech, they would be lower than they are today. And you're right, wholesale costs have been falling pretty much for the last 15 months. And we've seen some small adjustments by the big six, only on gas, not on electricity, from between 1% to 5% cuts. What we have said all along is that we have to tackle what has happened in our energy sector, which is a lack of trust by the public in the way they're being dealt with by the big six. That's why we want to reform the energy market, have a price freeze for 20 months to stop bills rising but also why we have said in light of what's happening in the last 15 months we want to give the power to the regulator to look at this issue about wholesale costs and if they fall and reasonable uh, reductions aren't passed on to customers the regulator should have the power to do that and there were two opportunities in Parliament this year <coughs> this year and a year a year or so before that for both the Liberal Democrats and the Tories to support that power for the regulator okay. and they voted against Matthew it Hancock, twice. it's quite clear that the big six, the big energy companies, have not passed on the full fall in wholesale prices. So why shouldn't the regulator have power to force them to do so? Well, thank God we didn't vote to freeze energy prices when the Labour Party asked us to because we would have frozen prices a hundred pounds higher than they are today. Well, if you frozen at the time and of Ed Miliband's speech, they would be lower today. No, than they, they were a hundred pounds no, higher. And the issue is, how do you get the best possible deal for consumers? And the answer to that is to have more competitive markets. There are now 21 energy companies, not the big six the question that Labour left. Andrew asked left. you about yes, this. Yes, I noticed this, that this, too, Caroline. Just, just, what's the answer just to, to my question? Remind, remember, to, just to remind Matt that before the last election, David Cameron, uh, the opposition leader, said there's something going on, I paraphrase it, but basically there's something going on where customers aren't yeah. receiving the benefit of wholesale cost falls. We will make sure we will put this right and make sure the regulator has the power to sort well, it out. Firstly, He's obviously changed his right, mind. Firstly, firstly, five firstly years. I called in the big six and they responded by reducing their prices. Now, they've... They have, nothing like the fall in wholesale prices. They have, prices. as well as the, as well as the wholesale gas. costs, as well as the wholesale costs, they have fixed costs as well, like the cost of transmission sure. and all those things, and some of the levies that we were talking about. You'd and we've hold on, on that. And we've exactly we brought down those costs. Labour want to put them and up. As a they're, result, they're, they're manifesto as a result of your reductions up. to the and energy the, company obligation, four hundred thousand fewer homes have got insulation. And the consequence of all this is that bills are is, coming down. Competition is the way to d tackle this. Uh, people out there watching this, they can many of them can uh, cut their energy bills today by switching to mm. other uh, the smaller players that we've encouraged. Sometimes two or three hundred pounds a year savings they can make. But under Labour, Ed, we had the, under know. Labour, we had the big six. We've now got 21 companies challenging the big six, which are offering a r really good deal. But the big, and the, six, and the the big thing, six still dominate the market. Well, but, but much, less, also, but much less so. Their market share is falling rapidly. And what's it really interesting, even is though we did that or extra competition, we've not been satisfied. We wanted to go further. That's why we supported the Independent Competition Authority's Ed, review. That's a policy 
identity but Ed Miliband, do not hold on, Carol Anthony. Okay. Times rejected. When Ed Miliband was my, doing my job, he helped create the big six. He didn't create competition, well, and he rejected the case for well, an independent well, review you know it. three times. You, you Ed Miliband it, but... should be apologising to the energy consumers, be they ordinary households out there or businesses, because Ed Miliband, but, far from being the, well, uh, actually, the energy consumer's yeah. price friend, well, he's their enemy. How he's, much of he's okay. sucked up to the big six. How much of electricity <laughs> prices come down in the past year? In the first year of which parliament? In the past year. Well, they've come down about, uh, well, it depends which you look at, because if you look at the fixed deals, they're, 